guarantee you that you will be learning more than people who've been studying for two years for their exams. In fact, you probably start making progress after the first day. I was having a chat with one of my students and they were like, I've got eight weeks left in my exams and I've been going through the content because I need to understand the content before I can master the exams. I'm going to be honest with you, doing the content will absolutely improve your grades. But if you're focusing on this in the last eight weeks of your exams, this is the moment where you stop being a top student or rather you stop wanting to be a top student. Say you're 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever, and you don't really have many qualifications to your name. You're about to sit your exams. You have no skills besides having gone to school thus far, been a clown all throughout your years of schooling and just been watching YouTube videos, right? Not you, but let's just imagine. In just five days, you can do papers and really dramatically improve your grades. Because we know from scientific research that the best way to improve your grades are by doing past papers. You will be able to answer a huge chunk of your paper just from a few days worth of revision by doing past papers. So if you can improve your grades significantly in a few days worth of combined practice papers than you have been able to do for the last few years, would you do this? Probably. Do you think it's worth it? The problem is that students think about improving their grades by covering all of the content first. But the way you're going to improve your grades the most is by doing papers. Why? What I found during my studies was that you want to learn the questions that are most likely to come up on the exam. Not everything on the specification is equally weighted. So if we take an example from say GCSE physics, you have F equals MA, which is a force equation which is very common and likely to come up. In comparison to, if you look in your spec for GCSE physics, you also need to know typical walking speeds or typical running speeds. These are very unlikely to come up. Not that they don't come up. If you're going for top grades, of course, we need to learn this eventually. But first we want to focus on the stuff that comes up quite often, the 80%, the ones that are coming up every single year. And the way you can learn that is by looking at the papers. A common mistake is then students start asking me, okay, can you tell me all the questions that come up? <laughs> no. You have to go through the pain and go through the fire of these exam papers to learn for yourself which are the most common questions. A sword is only made when iron is melted through the really hot kind of super furnace, right? So you have to go through that furnace for you to be turned into this immaculate steel sword. So here's a step that I would do if I was still in your place. Number one, I would do a paper. And how many papers? I would do two papers every school day. After school, I would do two papers. On a weekend or say Easter holidays, I would do four papers every single day. So these can be papers for any of your subjects. Obviously try to prioritize the subjects that are most important to you. So probably your core subjects or any subjects that are related to your A-levels that you'll be doing. So you're doing two papers on a school day, four on a non-school day. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you do them in exam conditions. So time yourself, make sure you're in a quiet room, etc., etc. Number two, you're going to mark your papers and you're gonna mark as harshly as possible. So in the real exam, you are hopefully pleasantly su surprised when the examiner is a bit more lenient than you. Number three, you will then record your results. It is very important that we record our results. What you can record, you can improve. What we can track, we can improve. Number four, you will then try to understand any of your mistakes. So an ideal way is to understand it directly through the mark scheme. That's the best case scenario. In some cases, that's not going to happen. You're going to be looking at it like, hey, I don't have no idea how they got this answer in the mark scheme. So then you're going to refer back to your notes if you had made any. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, like, I've been a clown all year round. I don't have any notes. Okay, fair enough. We can skip this part. We can go to the next part, which is referring to other resources. So you might refer to some video courses. You may refer to your textbook and you're like, how do I understand this particular part? So here we have shifted our attention from learning every single content piece to only learning the content pieces that you are getting wrong. So we are not wasting time on things that are not important and B, that you already know. So even here, I only really want you to spend five to 10 minutes on this topic. 
I don't want you to spend any longer on this because we ain't got time. Okay, ain't nobody got time, as the classic meme goes. So at this stage, you want to note down the question. So if you still didn't understand after five minutes, you want to note down the question and say, okay, tamam, I'm going to ask someone. Right? I am not going to waste time. I'm going to ask either a tutor, I'm going to ask a teacher or my friends who already understand this. And this is something that I used to do quite. I would understand 90% of the content myself from making these mistakes. And then there would be like 10% left that I wouldn't understand from the mark scheme or looking back at my notes. And then I would say, okay, I'm just going to ask someone. Okay? And that's how you can rapidly learn faster than others. Because the reality is each one of you can learn every single thing whether it's gcse a levels or even university level content by yourself absolutely you can but the point of a teacher or a mentor is to save you time and that is something many students fail to utilize in the last couple of weeks or last six weeks or whatever now we've asked someone or we've either understood it from the mark scheme or from the textbook what do you do now i want you to write it down on a cheat sheet a cheat sheet as the name suggests is a piece of paper which if you had in front of you, you would be able to get full marks on those particular questions. Now, a cheat sheet will consist of key points on how to answer the question. It is not the answer to the question. So the, if the answer is like 68, for example, that is not what's on the cheat sheet. On the cheat sheet is how to get to 68, all of the steps, how to get to that. And you're going to do that for all of your mistakes on that paper. Now, once you've done this, you'll have a nice A4 piece of paper with condensed points that if you had, you would be able to get 100% on the exam or on this particular exam rather. Now, of course, you're not allowed to take that sheet of paper into the exam because that would be cheating, right? So what we have to do is we have to commit that to our memory. So you are going to use two methods. And this is super important. Like I found so many of my students who, you know, I tell them they have to do papers and they're like, they're doing papers. And then I look at their marks and it's not improving at all. I'm like, what's going on here? And it turns out after doing a paper, they don't bother memorizing their mistakes or memorizing the method to solve their mistakes rather. So we have to use two methods. Number one is rote learning. Now I've done a whole long video on it. You can watch it over here. And I would advise that should be your main method. It's an old school method that I've personally used to memorize tons and tons of answers in very short space of time. It's an old school method, but it's something that still works. And number two, anything that doesn't work there, we're going to refer to flashcards. Now you can either do manual flashcards or Quizlet. Yeah, those are the two that I would recommend. And when I say flashcards, please make sure they are your own flashcards. Yeah, not someone else's flashcards. These are your mistakes. So it's going to be your questions and your answers on the back. And then finally, we need to realize that's only put it into your short term memory. So all of these steps have been after your one paper on that day. Now, we need to put this into our long term memory because if you go to Google and type in the forgetting curve, you'll see that we forget 80% of the stuff by the next day. Now that's obviously not ideal. So we have to recap our cheat sheet the next day and then maybe the day after. And then maybe every few days after that, and maybe then a week after that, and then maybe a few weeks after that, right? So we need to get it from a short term to a long term memory. And this way we are going to be ruthless with our mistakes. So we will be improving our paper mistakes ruthlessly. And God willing, you will, the result in your papers will gradually increase. Now I have used this method to go from U grades in my mocks to A stars. I kid you not. All right. If you follow this method, to the T, I guarantee you're gonna see at least a couple of grade improvements, yeah, at the minimum. More than likely, if you follow it to the T, you're gonna get eights and nines, A's and A stars, guaranteed. This is something that's worked for myself, is worked for my students. Now, obviously, each person has their own nuances, but this is what you've got to keep an eye on. So, in summary, before you start fine tuning and try to learn every single item, you need to iterate by doing multiple papers. And you need to be ruthless about it. The speed at which you're going to improve, it depends totally on how ruthless you are with improving your mistakes. Where most students go wrong is they correct one part here and then they'll move on to complete something completely different. And then they'll try to correct that part and then they'll correct another part. And what keeps happening is you're always starting from ground zero. You're not putting it into your long-term memory. You're not completely decimating a paper before moving on. 
we have to learn every single mistake, even that one marker on that paper. Because that one marker could be a gateway to a six marker question in the future. All right, if you like this video, if you're gonna follow this plan, or if you think that this will be really helpful to your future, or if you, know, you, you come back to it four months later, please do and subscribe as part of the gentleman's agreement to, for you having benefited from this video. Adios and toodles.